So think of a word that adequately (laughs) describes, I already have it, but I know what I would say. Um, Think of a word that describes the show. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, we're little girls. We're such little girls. I wonder if we've oh, synced up on everything. You our, know, like our, our cycles, cycles together yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sad. Can I do a two-part word? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can say whatever you want. You yeah. Wonderfully immature. And now for Dinner with Racers, presented by Continental Tire. With your hosts, Ryan Eversley and Sean Heckman. Placeholder radio set. Oh, I'm a driver oh. very angry. The sound of a driver on the radio during a race. What do you think I should call it? Hey. Welcome to Dinner with Racers. I'm Ryan Eversley, alongside my co-host, Sean Heckman. That's me. I'm Sean. We're on day 30 of our cross-country round trip, about 8,000 miles and in 20 different states, to bring you guys 27 dinners with racers. Yay. Yay. We met up with Shay Adam, who is a second-generation racer. Her dad, Bill Adam, was a very well-known sports car driver from back in the... 70s, 80s, and 90s, and Shay has picked up where he left off, but on the outside of the race car by doing commentary and all sorts of different production things in the racing world. So Shay is most known as a pit reporter and occasional booth commenter uh, for Radio Le Mans, which is uh, the major uh, radio and internet uh, broadcast provider of a lot of sports car racing around the world, of course, also in the IMSA WeatherTech uh, Sports Car Championship. Lovely young lady, uh, and we cover a variety of topics uh, that, that she's kind of unique to speak on. Everything from the dynamic within the Radio Le Mans community, for those who are big fans of what they do. Uh, and of course, being a young and cute girl, she's obviously getting hit on constantly. We definitely cover that territory very, very well. And, uh, and, and just a whole variety of things, everything from her dad to kind of how she manages her own life and... and uh, and that the, if there's one thing to be said about Shay, it's the immense amount of studying and research she does from every event so that she knows her stuff going in because she knows how many detractors there are in the world for what she does. So, with that in mind, we, uh, we met up actually at her place and uh, we brought food to her from uh, none other than Burger Fi, which is sort of a staple of Florida, isn't it? I think it's a chain everywhere now, but I had the Burger Fi cheeseburger and it was fantastic. And you had a uh, chicken sandwich. And Shay made us cookies. She did. They're lovely. They're still with us. And uh, let's uh, let's hear from Shay Adam. Once again, courtesy of Continental Tire. Meow. Meow. All right. We're going to start in five, four, three, two. So burger fry, huh? You go here often? Um, my mom really likes it, so we go about, I don't know, once a week. Oh, cool. I like how they have the bun is like... Yeah. Oh, like, wow. Yeah, so that's you, a little hinge. Yeah, you stay in there. You just stay in the game. Oh, and they burn the name on top. Okay. All right. Okay. So that you, when you're drunk and you can't remember what you <laughs> ordered. <laughs> is that a big problem for you? Not me. No, I don't drink, but you know... You have wine. You said you had wine. I have it for when friends come over. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boom. We're yeah. going to get along fine. Mm-hmm. How do they spell your name when mm. you go to like a coffee shop or a, or a burger place like this? Miserably. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen everything from Sean to <laughs> just my order written out. Really? Because yeah. they don't know how to spell Shay. Yeah. Has anyone gone C-H-E-Z? No, but they should. I don't think people down here are that cultured. Here in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we get um, an interesting mix of people down here where it's a lot of people who work on yachts. Right. And then just right. tourists okay. and cruise ship people. Sure. So. Oh, is this like the big cruise ship dock? Like people go here yes. and they're off to the Caribbean or wherever? Yeah, it's it's nice. a huge port. I mean, it's almost bigger than Miami. Nice. Really. So. so it's like all just white people looking for culture and old Asians. And a lot of Russians. Oh, and interesting. We got like crazy European people coming over to jump on these cruise ships. Have you? You're, you're an animal lover, right? Oh, Have yeah. Have you seen the movie uh, is it John Wick? Yeah. No, John Wick have. is an amazing movie. One, it was it's actually really well done because it had no money in it. <laughs> um, but it is a movie about Keanu Reeves having an adorable beagle. And the, the beagle is f***ing cute. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then it gets killed. So he decides to kill every Russian in New York. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's pretty much the movie. But it's awesome because, like, 
Like, it's one thing, like, oh, he killed my wife, or, or they killed, you know, my daughter, or whatever, but you kill a beagle? Yeah. And <laughs> motherfucker, I am watching this. I <laughs> want every Russian to die at that you, point. So. You kill my dog, I kill all of <laughs> exactly. you. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, that's so. a bit extreme. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's pretty much what we have going on down here. Yeah. A lot of people revenge murder and stuff like that. From it's the Florida, Florida. Florida. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my favorite author in the world is a guy named Tim Dorsey. Okay. And he writes in the same style as another guy, Carl Hyacinth. And the two of them used to work for the papers down here, the Tampa Tribune for Dorsey and the Miami Herald for um, Carl. And the two of them, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, got all their story ideas from the paper. Yeah, just by from right. real right. headlines. <laughs> Well, we had Miami Beach, what was it, last year, two years ago? The guy who ate the other guy's face off when he was yeah. on drugs. Oh, oh basalt. It's like, that guy. happens. Oh. Yeah. 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 Have you done basalt? No. <sighs> I'm squeaky clean. <laughs> like, I'm terrifyingly clean. <laughs> How do you get along at a racetrack, then? Um, I go to my hotel fairly early. Okay. Well, well, more importantly, I work out. How do you live in Florida? <laughs> that's yeah. the bigger question. Yeah, well, exactly. I grew up in South Miami where it was fairly sheltered. Right. Okay. Like, uh, people are like, oh, you're from Florida. You go to South Beach? I'm like, no. no. <laughs> Last time no. I went to South Beach was two years ago with two Germans, actually, mm. who were like, oh, we're here. We're, we want to go to South Beach. I'm like, really? Anyone we know? Uh, yeah, the Farnbachers. Oh, the Farnbachers. When oh. they they were down and they came on spring break week. You with Dominic and Mario. Yeah. Weird. The Farnbacher That's brothers so weird came on spring break. That they were in spring break. And wanted to go to South Beach. Yeah. <laughs> no, they were staying on South Beach. And they called and asked me to come rescue them. Really? Because you. they were like done now, at that point when you look at dominic do you hear harps no no <laughs> i do he's a beautiful man he is yeah the hair is fantastic absolutely not my type not, my type. <laughs> not your type you don't like the tall gorgeous sort of handsome no, i just don't like germans oh <laughs> <laughs> they steal so all our jobs you're, yeah you're no. the you're the anti-hitler i'm then. Uh, i'm <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We won, goddamn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you hear that horse? Tune into this podcast where Shea <laughs> refers to Ryan as the anti-Hitler. <laughs> Does that mean you're pro-Hitler, Shea? Mm-mm. All right. Just saying. I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> How has your eating been Terrible. On this track? It's been so bad. That's the thing is people are like, oh, yeah, you're getting all these nice meals with different mm. people. And that's true. But there's, you know, days in between and trips in between, mm. and we don't have time to, like, let's eat properly or whatever. We're both so run down that we yeah. keep having to, we're like, we need coffee. Mm. So we stop, and it's like, coffee. Oh, let's get a donut while we're getting yeah. coffee, you know, and it's yeah. like, that's just downhill. Yeah. I completely understand. Yeah. Tim Horton's iced cappuccino. Right. Ooh, oh, my God. That sounds good. I got one of those. <laughs> just careful, because your 30s are going to suck. Well, I got one of those for the first time when I was driving back to our cottage, um, the family cottage, which the is family in cottage. It, no, we actually do have a cottage. People, is it really a cottage? Yeah. Wow. It's 1,200 square feet. Do you speak elvish? Yeah, how do the elves go along? The elves are a bit of a pain. Yeah. We had to kick them out. I mm. mean, we've had the cottage for 15 years now, and I think we just got the last one out like three years ago, so it's taken some time. It's in the Shire, I'm assuming. Uh, well, of course. Yeah. yeah. But um, driving up to the cottage, it's two and a bit hours north of Toronto, so it's not an easy get-to place, um, which is good and bad, but... I landed from flying back from England. The flight landed at like 9. I cleared customs by 11. And then I had to drive that drive plus jet lag. I was gone. Yeah. I mean, it was it was game over. And I got in my Celica because I actually had my car up there. I drove all the way up oh, there. Oh, wow. We know a thing about summer. that. We know yeah. so. <laughs> and uh, I got in my Celica and made it to the Tim Hortons parking lot. And I said, I need to drive for three hours. Give me whatever will keep me awake. And the girl goes, oh, try our new iced cappuccino. I was like, done. So I took a sip and thought, this is not going to work. This is not. Hello. Right. <laughs> and it worked. And it was. There you were. Every time I started to fall asleep, I took a sip of it. And now I'm addicted to the things. Well, we've discovered <sighs> the ultimate solution. It's called ephedra. Yep. It's technically illegal. Yep. That technically. sounds like a drug. It is. Like oh, it is. Yeah. It is absolutely banned by the FDA. Except but like a commercial that you would see. Mm-hmm. Side effects Some, of the bedroom may include yeah. your arm falling off. Right, exactly. Or driving or, through a school bus, yeah. you know, not realizing it or something. Or waking up and realizing you're in Chicago and you have no idea how you got there. Yeah. <laughs> from San Francisco. From, from, yeah, yeah, from, from Monterey. Monterey. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, so ephedra, which we did our research because we we're like, this can't, this can't be, be okay. So we leave we leave Monterey at like 1.30 One, in the afternoon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had lunch with Jill Campbell, who's the track mm-hmm. president at Laguna. Awesome. And... Uh, 
you know, we're, we're kind of looking at our schedule. And we're like, we really need to be there. Like we got to hustle. Plus when we get there, we need to actually hunker down and do like work outside of the podcast. And Sean has a bunch of stuff going on. I'm working on next year's stuff for <clears throat> outside of world challenge. And, uh, it's like we need to kind of get get there and get sorted just have out. Have a day to work. Yeah, you know? exactly. So we hustle straight through. But at about midnight, I'm down to zero on the mileage on, on like how much fuel's left, and yeah. we're in the middle of nowhere. Like, uh, so I <laughs> I go to the lady at the thing, and I've got like a Starbucks like frozen can, like the big tall boy can, mm-hmm. you know. And I think I had a Red Bull, and then I had uh, uh, they had the five hour energy, and mm-hmm. I was like, do these things work? Because I'd had them before, and I didn't notice anything. I'm like, are these any good? And she goes. Don't try that one. She goes, you go get that one. And she points at like the Rhino Rush on the shelf. Oh and it's God. like, we're like, what's that? You know, <laughs> we like have to look and go get it. So we bring it up and it's like, okay, we'll try one of these. And we take it. And I drink the thing and I drove until like, you know, 8 a.m. the next yep. morning, just like yeah, hammered no down. Like, woo! Yeah. Like, life is good. Sean's waking great. up like every Every point. hour I wake up like, you good? And he's like singing, like, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm like, all right. Like, at least I'll be asleep when we die. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we make it to, uh, where did you get in? You started driving in like. Uh, somewhere in Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah. yeah. So uh, now I'm like, okay, I probably need to sleep. And it's like things are starting to get weird. It's like the morning mm-hmm. of the 24-hour after you've been up all night. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, wait, is it night or day? Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh <clears throat> I'm telling Sean, I'm like, yeah, that Rhino Rush was amazing. Like, I was cranking, like, through the night, no problem. And I'm, and I'm like, it says ephedra on it. Isn't that illegal? And he's like, what if it's, like, a box from the 90s that they were like, oh, we found this. We can sell it, you know? And so we looked it up, and it's like they're saying it's not ephedra, but it's, like, an ephedra extract, which is, like, their loophole mm-hmm. they're trying to get through or whatever. I don't know. Um, but Pretty it's, sure it wasn't a good idea. Yeah, it's definitely probably not good for you. So as unprepared as we seem. Uh, uh, we normally actually do a little bit of research on everybody we go to, to meet with and just make sure we kind of have our, our conversation points in order. And there, there's not a lot to be found on Shea Adam out there. No. Um, partially because you're, you're young and, and so you, your career has not been as long as a lot of the people that we've met with. And publicly. Publicly. Yeah. Um, so we figured with, with today we'd probably take a very different approach with you. We'd kind of, like, I don't, I honest to God, you know, obviously you come from a racing family. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of your, your father, I don't really know anything about you outside of Radio Le Mans. That's pretty much been the main focus of my career, and I've I've tried to make it that way. But yeah. um, I have done other series. I've I've covered for Canadian TV as well. Uh, IndyCar with my dad. We were the first father daughter team to actually do a broadcast, which was pretty cool. Oh, in the Canadian races. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, oh. when they did the double header in Toronto in thirteen, I think it was twenty thirteen. Yeah. Um, that whole season was kind of a blur after what happened at Le Mans. I didn't really yeah. process what was happening. Right. Um. But we did that. I covered the Trans Am series on CBS Sports this yeah. year, which has been a lot of fun. That racing is yeah, really cool. But my point is, like, you're coming onto the scene. Like, you weren't, like, a big carter or anything growing up? Or, no. Or really? I, I had a go-kart um, when I was little. Um, a guy by the name of Benny Kaiola, who's mm-hmm. big down here, he gave a little go-kart to my dad to give to me. Uh, when I was about five or six years old, I think. And it looked like a Ferrari F1 car. It had Marinello written on the back wing. It was Honda powered. It was so cool. As it should be. And uh, we lived yeah. in a gated community that was sort of a weird oval shape. Okay. And I would go out with my helmet on. Dad got me a helmet and everything <laughs> right. and tuck my hair down in my shirt or whatever I was. Um, and I would run lap times and he would time me. And um, I had a little speedo on it. One time I got up to 60 miles an hour. Yeah. And our our community was not that big. I mean, yeah. I was wheeling it through the And that the probably corners. was speed limits there, I'm sure. Yeah, 15. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that was the point where my mom said to my dad, if you let her race, I'll leave. Oh, wow. Oh, like, interesting. That's she's cool. not going to race. So okay. that was, you know, the end of my career. Okay. So <laughs> the I, end of my career. I pretty much <laughs> stopped karting at 11. Because I, I assume that presents a little bit of a challenge. Like you're coming in and commenting and... and you know, doing, doing, you know, a lot of pit work and whatnot. And, and it's, you know, most people who are in sort of the broadcasting side either come from a very heavy broadcast experience or they come as former drivers or, or team mm-hmm. personnel. And you're not coming from that. Can you put that Absolutely. Over? I have no expertise on which to stand. Sure. I have nobody to say, well, she knows what she's talking about because she raced for she 10 years. And right. I don't, I don't even have the advantage that my dad has because he drove professionally well, he drove forever, for 42 right? yeah. years. Yeah. So... That has been hard to sort of establish, but also nobody's questioned it because I do so much homework. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I live racing, so yeah. 
I make it my job to know more, if not as much as anybody out there who has done the same job because Ryan knows how to set up a car, but I might've seen the problem that he's coming into the pits with before. So I can reference, okay, the last time I saw something like that, it was because the brake rotor had actually come off and cut the wheel. Maybe he doesn't know what that is yet, but you know, so I try to just. <coughs> so you're saying you're smarter than Ryan? No, no, no. no I think you did. No, Let's I'm. Not. I would agree with her. I yeah. was <laughs> using you as a generic driver. Sorry about that. And oh, now I'm a generic driver. Yeah. No, from sorry. one end to the next. Wow. You're, you're, you're hardly a Should generic I leave? driver. Like, no. I thought I was welcome here. Um, you know, but you've been around it your whole life. I don't. Just in case someone that's downloading this and they don't know who you are. Let me rephrase that. Just in case somebody actually downloads this <laughs> or any of them. First off, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yep. Um, our, our joke has been that uh, fans might not understand the workload that it took to make this happen. Mm. Oh, I don't think it's a might. By the way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. going to be like, why didn't you go to New York and interview Bobby Labonte when he was there, you know, or something like mm-hmm. that. So, um, why didn't you ask this question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> um Set the scene for us on your dad's racing career. Uh, anybody that really knows sports car racing definitely mm-hmm. knows who he is. But let's say we get a crossover soccer player from Sean Johnson listening or something like that. Talk about your dad's career for a little bit. Um, well, my dad started racing um, when it was just a hobby for him. He'd always been obsessed with cars from a small boy uh, living in Scotland and then moving to Canada. His love was Formula One and cars and just everything he could get his hands on. And his hero was Jim Clark. So that sort of launched him in. Uh, he used to go to races at Mouse Sport when he could and watch the cars and was just enamored with them. But life didn't turn out the way he thought it would because Weird. he went to school. He you know, graduated high school. He went to a community college sort of thing, got a degree in chemistry and wound up working as a chemist in a factory up uh, in Burlington, Canada. And when he finally could afford to, he bought his own Corvette and made it into a race car and started doing track days at Mostport, but not track days sort of as you would think of them now. Like he would go with one set of tires for a season. Right. So he wow. couldn't yeah. wear them off. Yeah. Um, and his big break came when he beat Bob Tullius mm-hmm. and Bob was amazed because nobody had beaten him. And so he said, okay, if I can't beat you, I want you in my car. So they became co-drivers and that's where dad's career sort of took off. But his first team was called Bed. Dead Bear Racing. That was his Corvette team. And we still have shirts from that, which is pretty cool. Um, So we raced with Bob for years in Triumph. He won the 12 hours of Sebring with Bob. Uh, And then from there, he went to the Group 44 Jaguar. He raced in... uh, Jaguar. Yeah, well, I've <laughs> been I've yeah. been trained by hind off. So. Yeah, I can do it. That's <laughs> we'll, my, we'll get that's into that. My um, dad, yeah. my dad's the same way. Yeah, yeah. Um, he went and raced uh, Rothman's Porsche Cup, which was sort of like the Super Cup of the day, but this was in the '80s, and he was racing against people like Ron Fellows and um, Scott Goodyear and Richard Spinard, and mm-hmm. the three of them actually won a an honor to go race at the 24 Hours Le Mans in a. Porsche that was completely sponsored by Canada. So it was a Canada lineup, and that's actually the poster I have over my couch is from that race. Um, from there, he went on, he raced, uh, biggest thing was with Champion Porsche when they picked him up, and that became his real solid thing. He and Hans Stuck did that, and it's really funny when you're a child around Hans Stuck because you don't understand how inappropriate he is. Right, yeah. So <laughs> people now who are like, wow, you grew up around Hans Stuck? I'm like, yeah, but I didn't get the jokes. I um, didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> they, I mean, they won, they very nearly won Daytona together. Uh, they did win Sebring together. But in those cars, dad had um, a really bad crash at Daytona one year where somebody came up and actually hit him in the rear corner panel and he, he flipped over and over and four and a half times. Um, and then the next year he had what until last year was the only red flag in the 12 hours of Sebring history was a crash for him when he hit a bridge throttle stuck open as he was coming under that bridge in the infield and um, it wound up being a pretty massive hit but the the owner of champion is a man who is brilliant Dave Dave Mirage Mirage. and he's very superstitious so he thought if dad got back in a car that was champion third wreck would be game over wow um, no. So he said, Bill, I love you. You're no. one of my favorite drivers. I'll keep paying you, but I don't want you to drive. I want you to be a part of the team at right. other facilities. 
So from there, dad sort of changed his trajectory. He did a lot of coaching, um, and then he wound up driving the Audi R8 Le Mans prototype right. uh, chassis 405 <laughs> in HSR, and he's very proud of that. Of course you know the chassis um, number. Yeah. And he won a championship in that, driving yeah. with... Um, Doug Smith or Andy Wallace? With Andy Wallace. Yeah, Andy um, and also, it was with um, the team owner. Yeah. So between that, but... I really, and I, I I don't know how to say this nicely, I really didn't care about racing when I was little. Like, sure. I would watch it on TV, and my first word was car. So, hmm. it's always been there. But I sort of went through that phase where I was like, yeah, this is great, but, you know, I've got soccer practice. Yeah. So, awesome. I backed off of it. Um, and then after I, I went to FSU, I was miserable there, because as I mentioned earlier to you, Ryan, I don't drink. Um, so <laughs> I picked, and you live in Florida. Well, yeah, there, right. are, there are four things that you need to be successful in college. You need to have time for studies, work, a social life or sleep. Pick three. Yeah. I gave up social life. So I got out of there with two degrees in three years. Wow. I mean, I was like, you know, yeah. um, and I was so burnt out when I was done that my dad said, look, I'm going to Lime Rock. I'm driving. You can come with me. You know, it's 10 hours from the cottage. Let's just do it. Let's give you a break. So I went with him to Lime Rock and ran into one of my friends there who I'd been friends with in high school, Dion Von Molka. I'm like, right. what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing here? I hadn't seen him in, I don't know, at that point, five years. And I sort of got reinterested yeah. in it there because suddenly it was people I'd met a few years before, but he was doing the commentary for ALMS at the time. And so that weekend I spent in the production truck and yeah. with everybody and sort of, you know, feeling... Okay. This, this could be kind of like this. Yeah, yeah, this this isn't so bad. And you're staying at the cottage. And I was staying at the cottage so at the time. So this meant that you were developing a cottage industry. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> it happened. You're welcome. I raised my glass to you <laughs> for that you one. Thank you very much. So this was what, 20... 2011. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At Lime Rock? Yep. And so you're just out of school. So you're like 21, 22. Yeah, I'm, I'm 21 years old. I've driven from Tallahassee to the cottage spent like a week at the cottage and then my dad's like hey let's go for a road trip come on so i went with them anyway turned out to be a great race reconnected with people who i'd enjoyed spending time with before um like pat long yeah. who i always thought was one of the coolest dudes on the planet um and you can oh, download yeah. his podcast right here on dinner with racers yes. on itunes oh you got him too oh, oh yeah. i can't wait to he hear said that. so much controversial stuff oh i bet <laughs> that's that's his personality. That's his thing. Yeah. Yeah. He gets out of the he car and he's like, "Wow, that car was terrible." He wasn't wearing a shirt. It was really. It was weird. very strange. That yeah, must have been distracting. And he's got a whole chest tattoo, which we didn't yep. know about. Oh, it was exactly. Like, Whoa, man. Was it the baby's name? Yeah, but yeah. it was like top it, to bottom. I mean, and like, this weird like yeah. calligraphy mm. thing. Yeah. 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 So it went from that to um, missing the next race because it was, I think it was Road America. I was at the cottage. We don't have internet at the cottage. Yeah. We don't have phones at the cottage. We have radio. We don't have TV. So like we're out of it and at that point um i think at that point we were still internet drive to the library oh, it's to Canada. find out what's Isn't going that on kind of the norm yeah but you know some really really rich people have internet at their cottages and i hate yeah. them uh, so yeah, i try to pick up wi-fi signal. like i stand on our deck with my computer like praying <laughs> something on, will give me something yeah. you could, what you, so this so this would be your next business venture is to fill cottage fire yeah, is developing <laughs> Cotfi. Yeah, you, it's you're developing uh, Wi-Fi for signals, cottages. Wi-Fi for cottages. <laughs> it could be a new cottage industry. The problem, it, though, okay. the problem, though, and I like where you're going with this. It's Canada in general yeah, that has this problem with Wi-Fi, like, they're everywhere. They're not business friendly. No. Okay. No, it's really. They're socialists. I get it. It's it's the one problem with Canada. Really? You know, the and one thing. And they're anti-Semites. Yeah, but it's the one problem with Canada. That's the one problem. I can I can that? live as a Jew. I can live with the anti-Semitic <laughs> problem. <laughs> this is what we've started. Good job, Ryan. So, 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 is it okay to say that? Say Jew? Yeah. Like that? It's just the tone is what makes it, it a problem. If you say it like Cartman, it's not okay. 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 Ten four. Well, so yeah. if you have an accent, say, it's not okay. We yeah. say it like, yeah. yeah. But I don't like. We can't say it like that, right? Like I can't go Jew. Why not? No, you're not offended. Mm -mm. Okay. I mean, I'm not a very good Jew, but still, <laughs> you know, I didn't have a bat mitzvah yeah, or anything. See, so. see, I don't hang out with Germans. No, yeah. I'm half and half, so you know. <laughs> so awkward pause. Mm -hmm. 
so you're Jewish and you're working at Corvette at Mid not Mid Ohio. Yeah, Mid Ohio. Yeah, Mid Ohio. That that was the end of I missed the next race and it drove my mom up a wall because I couldn't find out what was going on and so I'm pacing around the cottage. I'm like, Is Lucas Lore gonna win? Is Lucas gonna win? Is the Muscle Milk team not gonna win? Is Dyson gonna win? And my mom's like, Shut up. <laughs> we won't know until your father gets back. Right. Just breathe. Um, so it was kind of at that point that I realized I couldn't not know. It was time to move to America. <laughs> so yeah, after that, it was like, okay, I need to come back to the world and get a job because I've graduated from college yeah, now. Yeah, you're like a real adult now. So I got a job delivering press cars, um, which now I receive, which is really nice. Um, Doing it, what? Delivering press cars, press effectively. Cars. Uh, cars for journalists, for media. Right. Um, for my entire life, for the last 18 years, um, Every week we get a different car delivered for my dad to test drive. Okay. Write a story on it. Don't sure. say nice things about it. If you don't like it, don't say anything about it. Right. Just give us your feedback sort of thing. Uh -huh. um, and I was picked up working for the company that delivers it because they've been family friends for such a long time and I thought I could really make an impact. Well, I did make an impact. I started their social media, which is now like a big thing that they still pride themselves on. Right. Um, but it was ridiculous hours. I mean, I was working 60 hours a week, six days a week. And I said to them, I want to work five days a week because there were people who worked seven. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was every Monday was deliveries to um, Orlando and Miami, depending on what we needed to do. Tuesday was Tampa. Wednesday was Miami. Thursday was Jacksonville. And Friday was wherever else we missed. So I was racking up somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500 to 3,000 miles a week. And I was mostly on local deliveries. So driving a lot of cool cars, like eight different cars a day. Sure. But I had nothing. Right. Like yeah. I was leaving at six in the morning and getting home at eight o'clock at night some days. Yeah, driving around is just tiring when you're yeah. doing it all day. Well, and then you have to clean the cars oh. and make them perfect because there are some journalists. Right, and, right. you know, I would say the name even, you know, with bleeping it. But this guy is such an asshole that he called to complain because I missed one of the wheels. Shay Adam just said it. This this guy deserves it. We won. <laughs> we won, Sean. <laughs> this Sean, no, 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 don't edit this out. And it wasn't it wasn't even the whole wheel. Oh, it was, it was like, just like a long part. It was a great like, smart. These are because these are journalist cars, and yeah. every journalist thinks he's a race car driver, and and uh, so I assume these cars are just abused to. Sh yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, no wheels are always dented. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous Who how much that? people and and they don't tell you when the season started to come up again and I couldn't go to Daytona because I had to work and yeah. I was delivering cars to people for Daytona, but I couldn't go. Uh, um, yeah. That's when something switched in my brain and I wrote an email to dad's boss because dad wasn't going to be a part of the series anymore. He was, they'd said, we're going to, to two announcers only. Yeah. Um, I wrote an email to his boss or whoever I thought was his boss, which was a producer of ALMS, Jim Roller. And mm -hmm. I wrote him this email begging for a job i mean like it's pathetic if you read this email and he pretty much wrote me back and said i actually have one opening um it's a graphics font coordinator okay. i can teach you yeah. it's what ann does or did his late wife um now but he said she can help you we'll we'll you know we'll we'll try this come to sebring we're not going to pay you because you're not going to work. You're going to learn no. how this goes. No. So I sat in the truck for the whole 12-hour race and learned how this went. But I went to the track. I brought him cookies. I'm like, thank you so much, Mr. Roller. He said, if you ever call me Mr. Roller again, you're fired. It's like, okay. But graphics wound up being a different world. Yeah. And it was really hard yeah. because you couldn't be a fan. You yeah. couldn't yeah. watch you the have racing. To keep up and keep ahead of the next thing. <laughs> yeah, Chiron's all together. And, and yeah. I was working on two different systems: a Chiron and a, a Viz and a yep. Duet. So, so it was you're loading Chiron things and... in the hat and trying to get all the wording up ahead well, of time. And... We had guys to do the hat. Thankfully, okay. um, Andy was constant. He was there every week, and he had a bunch of different people. Uh, yeah. Jason and TJ were his number two yeah. guys who were there most of the time. But more. no, it's interesting because I have a semi-similar story, but mm -hmm. but with a very different outcome. So, <laughs> um, uh, it's me and two girls, right? Mm -hmm. And no. Um, but and uh, a lot of crying when I was uh, uh, when I was sort of full time in television. Um, you know, I was working on dramas and sitcoms and stuff, and I was like, you know, I still loved racing and mm. kind of wanted to go back to it a little bit. So um, I wrote Terry Lingner, who was running yes. all the IndyCar productions yep, at the time. Is. So when IndyCar came into Fontana, I was like, you know, hey, can I? do something just for the weekend. I don't need to be paid. I just want to see, mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm doing all this production stuff here in LA, but maybe there's a fit for me. And, and so he had me doing a very similar role at Fontana and I didn't like it. Mm. Um, and it, and the, 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 the people that Terry surrounds himself were fantastic. And most of them are still there. Uh, but I did not like the fact that an entire IndyCar week went, uh, weekend went by and I never left the trailer. You know, no. I wanted to be in mm -hmm. the action yeah. and that just doesn't exist. Well, I made a point. I skipped our lunch breaks every, almost every day. And then yeah. Jen and Lisa were like, dude, we miss you. Come yeah. back. <laughs> um, but I would always go and walk the paddock. Yeah. And I would try and get stories because as font coordinator, you're in the morning meeting yeah. with all the talent and the producer and the right. director and all that. So, you know, it kind of became a point that Billy, who's still the director on IMSA, bless his heart, love that man. Um, he would try and encourage me to ask the questions or raise the points that I wanted to do. Right. Even though I'm just the font coordinator, I'm supposed yeah. to be sitting there taking notes, you know? <laughs> People are supposed to be bringing me graphics. I'm not supposed to be coming up with this stuff, and yeah, I am. Right. Like, But he got to the point where, in the morning meetings, Bo Barfield knew my name. At that point in time, I'd never been on air. I wasn't doing Radio Lamal stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're doing fonts. That came um, in the January before I'd started any of this. And John and Eve uh, came to our John house. Hindaw and John Hindaw and Eve Hewitt, the producer slash yep. wife. They... Um, no, she runs the business. She is oh, I have the no business. doubt. Yeah, She's yeah. the boss. Yeah. She's the boss. Yeah. Um, they came to our house after the 24 hours of Daytona, the 50th anniversary. And I, I remember that because they brought me a hat. So oh, and I still yeah. have that hat. So um, you didn't go? No. I was working. I wasn't uh, allowed right. to go. Yeah. And they got to our apartment, or, or townhome, I should say. It's not actually an apartment. This is an apartment. I yell at my mom all the time for doing that. Um they got there and they hadn't been there 10 minutes before they had sat down on the couch and said, have you ever thought about pit reporting? And I, no, but that makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we want to fly you to Le Mans <laughs> and drop you in the deep end. We want to see if it's nature or nurture. Yeah. And if you swim, great. If you don't, hey, you can still help us out. So they, they said, right, we're going to fly you to Le Mans. And we're going to do this. I didn't believe it. I yeah. thought, you know, yeah, great. Sure you are. Yeah. And then the plane ticket arrived in May. Right. And I was yeah. like, okay, this is happening. Yeah, it's happening. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this is 2012. This is 2012. My first ever moment on air, <laughs> first interview, we're at Scrutineering in the Plaza de la Republic. All these people are around. And I'm looking around just amazed. And all of a sudden, John goes, and there's Shay Adam with Dindo Capello and hands me the recording device, like, going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, um, okay, what am I going to ask him? What, you know, my brain just went and into... Got, and you got to right. go. I mean, you're And you got to go. The only thing I could think about was, is Dindo going to retire? Is this his last Lamont? Right. Because nobody had gotten the answer. And so I asked Dindo um, if this was possibly his last Lamont. What would it mean to win? And I could hear John and Jim in the background. And it's one of the, the <laughs> things. They both went, no. <laughs> no, they got that. Oh, my God. Her career's over before it's even started. Right. And they still say that they both thought it was that game was over. It. Yeah. <laughs> and Dindo goes, he laughs. And he said, well, you, you said possibly. And it's possibly. Yeah. And he, he ran with it. And he said, well, you know, I've, I'm comfortable with thinking that this is my last them all. And they both went, oh. All right. Like, we okay. Keep right. Yeah. But it was, it was one of those things where. As a fan, it was the question I wanted answered. Yeah. And it was the, as a journalist, question that everyone was too afraid to ask. Sure. So that was sort of the moment that got things going. You know, on your first day. Yeah. yeah it's and, like... and somebody who I had quite literally watched growing up my whole life. Right. And that I still have absolute, like, I'm getting goosebumps. I still have fangirl moments. The fact that Alan McNish wow, and nice. Dario Franchitti know my name. You, that terrifies me. You actually do have goosebumps. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> they've been heroes of mine for such a long time that, right. like, Alan in particular, he comes up to me now and gives me a kiss on each cheek. Does he have it's to, like, like, stand on something? Yeah, but, you know, I bend down. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But, I mean, ask me anything you guys want. I have nothing to hide. And I'm, I'm all for, you know, well, live radio. We don't actually, edit. <laughs> but, here, so, but this is a, a real question on that mm. sense is, is that you are still a fangirl. You don't come as a driver. Do people, do you think some people don't take you seriously? I've yet to meet somebody like that, right. which has been very nice because there are people in the industry who you can tell um, maybe feel more entitled to their position than you are. Sure. Um, not not naming any names or anything. Just there, well, n not even like there. There are people <laughs> who. 
there there are people who feel like they should be there because they are better than you and Blunt. they oh f-ks all the way yeah, yeah. F-ks, f-ks. That guy. oh yeah no f-ks, um we're gonna be Connor. bleeping his name yeah. out oh, yeah. so obviously you guys are the main name in the sport of of radio for sports car racing i mean it's it's radio lamar you're talking about What's that? Radio no, Lamont. he means me. I mean, just Shay. He means just me. Shay. Shay yeah. is the new face <laughs> of sports car racing. I'm the new it's face radio. of radio. Well, you're the new enough. face Thank of sports car that. radio. I think sports car racing <laughs> could benefit from you being the face of it, to be honest. Um, you have a very – I gave you big credit for this last year watching some of the WEC stuff that you were doing. The most important thing or impressive thing to me is that you know how to pronounce all their names correctly. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll think a guy's name is a guy's name, and then you interview him, and I'm like – Ah, uh, that's amazing. I had no idea. <laughs> Stupid American. Like I'm trying to think of who it was. Maybe it was Andy Pre. Andy Pre. Yeah, I'm like yeah. Preux. <laughs> Preux. <laughs> you, know, you know, something like that. There was another one you said once last year during WC, and I literally was like, like I need to go read a book or something. <laughs> I, I, that's not what that guy's name was to me this whole time. Yeah. Have you seen the WEC video that's been going around about driver pronunciations? Drivers trying to pronounce each other's that. names. Oh no. But Razzle Dazzle DL. Oh I yeah, I did that. see that. Yeah, but for sure. That's that's homework. You just do your work. You do your your research. Who's yeah. the hardest name to say? Hmm. We actually had a Bonanomi. chart. No, no, no. Bononomi not bad. Um, it's fun though. It is fun. We had a, a chart up on the wall a few years ago for Nelson Panciatici, because so what? many people in our booth were mispronouncing it that <laughs> Paul Trussell sat there and wrote it out for in the middle of the night and actually did it, you know, the phonetic way where there were dots in between where you should <laughs> so take So you knew break. how to... Yeah, it was... Um, uh, I, I can't think of a name. One of the most fun ones to say is uh, Ranger Van de Zandt. I was going to uh, say yeah. that. I was Absolutely. just going to say yeah. that. He's my yeah, favorite. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Him and uh, Shane Van Gisbergen. Shane Van Gisbergen. Oh, he's an Ranger awesome Van dude. <laughs> so... Have you ever been accused, and this can be for like the whole Radio Le Mans bubble, mm. of playing favorites for people that you guys interview? Because I, mean, I know how it is. Like when I did a little tiny bit at MRN, mm. and then when we're doing this stuff, I mean, we're going, we're going to the people we know the best mm. for our first season, obviously. And when I was doing the MRN stuff, it's like, okay, I don't know anything about Gustavo Ackerman, but I know Tommy Milner pretty well, and he's yeah. the next next thing over i'll talk to him yeah you know what i mean um but then at the same time i know how passionate our fans can be and the why aren't you talking to my guy you know oh, go sure. interview that do you guys ever get that kind of grief or <laughs> i get more of that <clears throat> and honestly this is in the trans empathic i get more of people saying like why don't you come over and interview me and oh, it's me. like well, or, not or, a fan. or, or yeah, yeah, my yeah. driver or right, you know i get right. a lot of people saying that but well, this is I'm, Trans Am where there's a lot of funded drivers who are yeah, who are sort of yeah, there for yeah, and I think that's vanity. that's part of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the perfect example, and I'm not I'm not afraid to use his name. Mel Shaw uh, came over to me. Who? Mel Shaw, exactly. Yeah, he came over to me. Uh, he's a TA3 driver, and he's the oldest guy in the paddock. And he so came the, over and, and said, t- just for those, just in the strange occurrence that people don't watch <laughs> Trans Am, yeah, or no, um, TA3 or no, is the, t- it's like the third tier down. It's the 325 horsepower classification where there's two different subcategories, and it's uh, I'm already out. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's the third. It's it's, it's the third tier down basically yes, within, yes. The, within the, the top one, one is TA. That's the main that's, class. Okay. That's 800 horsepower okay. beasts. The second one is TA two. That's right. 550, and then you get TA three. Right. And then you um, have which Mel Shaw is Sauber F1 test driver. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. No, he he does. I mean, bless his heart. He keeps going out every weekend. He keeps trying. Um, but he he tends to run more toward the back. But fair to him, he is the oldest guy on the grid. And he came up to me at one race and said, "Hey, you should really interview me. I'm the oldest guy in this paddock." And in my mind, I'm thinking, "Okay, I've got a 43 minute cut down show. Effectively, mm-hmm. yeah. I can interview you, but it's not going to make it right. because my producers want this person, this person, this yeah. person." So it's not really fair to you to do an interview and you expect it to be in there when it's never going to make it. Right. Um, I'm the biggest critic of myself for not being fair with interviewing people. People don't come up to me and right. say like, Hey, you really should interview Oz more. 
you know, you, right. you've only interviewed him seven times this year or whatever, <laughs> you know. But but anyway, so you, I mean, you're going to gravitate towards people that you're more familiar with. Like Dion. Yeah. You know, I do a lot of work with Paul Miller and you're always yeah. there talking to Dion. Yeah. But you guys are, have known each other for a long time. I've known him half my life, yeah. which is scary. Which is like 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. No, I am legal to drink. Um, <laughs> no, he, uh, I, I go towards him a lot. Like you, when I saw you in the most poor pit. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, score, I have Ryan to talk to. Um. There are people that you inevitably wind up talking to over and over again because they win over and over. Robin yeah. and Andrew, perfect examples this year. You can't keep away from them because yeah. they keep winning. Yeah. Um, and I love talking to them too, sure. you know, not to detract from them at all. Um, they're, <laughs> my biggest goal every year is to try and talk to somebody from at least every team, which sure. I, I make out a list and I actually <laughs> cross people off after I've interviewed them. I really don't want to interview people multiple times on the same weekend because sure. I feel like I'm not being fair. Right. Um, but also, you really shouldn't dictate where you go. You should let the race Story tell you. To you yeah. So, you know, if I go to, if I come in the pits um, and I, I listen back to everything I do, that's yeah. a huge thing and I take notes on it. Have you ever had a driver be rude to you? Oh, God, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Can we name some names? Oh, yeah. Richard Westbrook. What? Mm -hmm. No. No. Yep. It must have been out of, like, it's not normal. It was Le Mans 2013. Right. Was and that a bad day? Yeah. Yeah. It was when we lost Alan um, yeah. Simonson in the crash. Yeah. Um, but the middle of the race, I went over to interview him about how the race was going. Uh -huh. um, and he kept going back to the fact that he thought we should not be racing, that it was uh -huh. wrong that he felt wrong, that, you know, all this is going on. Mm -hmm. And I have Jim in my ear because Jim's in the booth. Right. And Jim said to me after the first question, oh, boy. Yeah. That was all he said. And I remember him saying that, which he didn't have to say because you have to push a button for it to go into my ear. Right. So he goes on through that. And I said, you know, we're... And I assume that's his sort of code of, like, no, okay, can we change? No, or it just, was I'm, him... I feel bad for you kind of thing? It was him out loud, like, going through the emotion yeah. okay. of oh, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then I continued and I asked him a follow-up. I said something about, you know, we all feel that way. We we all feel gutted. Um, but given that we are racing and given that the race will go on and that it was his family's wishes to continue, um, what are your hopes to get out of this race? And he said, ah, I just think we should finish, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of it, I just bailed. I, you know, I, yeah. I wasn't going to ask him another question. Yeah, I wasn't no, going to provoke right. him anymore. Yeah. And um, he turned and walked away. Yeah. He just flat out. Yeah, but he's not. A, he's not that guy. That's a yeah, bad that day. Was a bad no, day. Yeah. but I didn't interview him again until this year. Yeah, because you were like afraid to go approach him, or he would or because you're you. like, no. Screw it that was guy. a little of both. Yeah. Yeah. honestly, it, it was more of a. I really don't want him to remember having acted that way, sure. and then feel badly about it, yeah. or you know, to completely not remember it, which would have been sort of almost worse. So. But when I went up and interviewed him this year, he was, you know, couldn't have been a nicer guy. Yeah. And it was a bad day for everybody. I was going to say but that we, we, he gets a pass. Yeah. On that one. Yeah. Absolutely. So who's who's been rude that doesn't get Repeatedly. a pass because they were just being a douche? You're like, I interviewed this guy, Bill Adam. It was awful. Christopher Hasse. I tend to. <laughs> Dion Von Mulkey. I, I was going to say John Potter is extraordinarily oh, sarcastic. Oh, which, that's getting edited. No. Which, which John I Potter is, a, is an upstanding it's and amazing go. gentleman. It's, it's what I appreciate because He's so awesome. many people yeah. give you the bog stock answer right. of, yeah, what the he car care? is, yeah. you know, the car is great. And I can go up to him and be like, so, John. Um, how are things going this season? The team's been gelling really well. It's your fourth year in existence. So, so this was like, like two years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, it was Daytona, <laughs> Daytona the test this year. I, I did an interview oh. with him at, or at um, yeah, it was at the Roar. And I did an interview you with him and I said something about, um, <laughs> something about how the team is in its, you know, sixth, fifth year of existence or whatever it was. Sure. And uh, he said, actually, I've been in existence for 30-something years, but, you know, the team's been around for this long. And, you know, it was just... That's a, him being Don. Yeah, that's not... It was yeah. every answer was a witty remark. Yeah, and I was like, that's how I works. like that. Yeah. I really like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So that's not a bad thing, but that's a different thing. Right. Um, okay, so that doesn't but count. When, but when you go to him, you don't know the answer you're going to get, yes. which, is, yeah. which makes him unique compared yeah. to some right. of the other guys. Um, sure. He's really, really good about that. I can't think off the top of my head of anybody who's just been flat rude but you know there are always those people yeah, that you yeah. see in the garage and you're like oh i really don't want to talk do you know spence from pilly killed a guy so one one that. thing i've always wondered yeah. uh uh with sort of the dynamic in in that environment is 
You use a lot of English phrases and that you grew up Canadian and, mm-hmm. and, you know, I've heard you say slippy. Yes. I'm like the Americans don't <laughs> say that. What are you doing? <laughs> um, you pronounce things. Do you say aluminum? Uh, no, I say aluminum. Okay, good. No, okay. I'm, I'm proper on is that. that. So is that you trying to sound sophisticated or is that Hein Dawes influence? <laughs> It's no, it's that's, dad, isn't it? that's the way I was yeah, raised. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, garage is Gar- something garage. Inst- like garage, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um, cupboard instead of like pantry or, you okay. know, closet, um, sofa. We normally use couch. Like there are just little nuances that, that have been different my whole life. And I do tend to say oot, but it's more <laughs> prominent. Well, I'm more forgiving of that because that's a Canadian thing. Yeah. But well, I'm and all it. those are Canadian we don't as well. Say, we don't say slippy out here. They don't say slippy. Yeah, they do. They, do they really? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of Canadians speak yeah. like their English. Hmm. Yeah. Both my brothers yeah. are Canadian and I still talk to them. Oh, well, we're um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the one in Canada, when I, when I, the one who lives up there still, when right. I talk to him, it's like, wow, I forget how weird you guys talk sometimes <laughs> right. i can't believe i'm related let's, to you i don't know about you but let's let's have a run a bit because uh kendall had a great question for you so we do this this theme where the previous guest asked the next guest a question and i think tommy's question is a good transition i'm afraid for us. <laughs> it's not it's not bad and i'm sure it's one you can answer pretty freely before the question he was very complimentary of your broadcasting and everything you've done in really? the sport he was yeah. like great job make sure she knows that she's been doing an awesome job with everything and then he said she's really like uh she's by the book she's very clean so I'm going to ask her a question. I don't think she's going to answer it, but <laughs> I want to know. He says, uh, and we have a bet as to whether you're going to name names or not. Yeah. I want to know in the paddock, who's got the best pickup game and who's got the worst. And then I want names is what he followed mm. it with. Best you have to game? get hit on. Oh, I do. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> I, like, I tend <clears throat> to ignore it a lot. Actually. Oh, absolutely. Um, embarrassingly enough, my high school sweetheart um, raced NASCAR trucks, but it was we were together before he raced like anything legitimately. He okay. crashed a lot. Um, so my <laughs> John West Helm. John West Helm. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, <laughs> the handsome to, man. Go to your second name on that list and you're probably there. Um, but well, I was going to say, what's what, her face? Brian Silas. <laughs> what's her face? Well, yeah, that's what? What I was like. Was it Brian no. Silas? Was it Brian Silas? No, Jennifer no. Joe Cobb. No, Joey Coulter. Oh, yeah, you told yeah. me that. Yeah, yeah the one who went up that. into the fence that's, at Daytona. Okay, but um, that's not Brian Silas, so you're okay. Yeah. No, but, but he's not racing anymore. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> he was my first boyfriend, and then my second boyfriend uh, raced Porsche GT3 Cup, who I did meet through the paddock, and that was Sean Johnston. And I do have to tell you guys that you're going to love this story. I ran into him at Spain when I was doing the Barcelona 24 a few weeks ago, and, you know, things were, were winding down through the race, and I was running out of people in the garage to right. interview. And, and you guys are separated at this point. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. we've been broken up for three years, I think. Okay. Like, it didn't it didn't end well, I'm not going to lie. Who got the um, kids? <laughs> I kept his family, which is oh, the wow. weird part. Oh, um, I'm, cool. I'm guessing you're a hit with parents, so I can oh, see yeah. that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a shoo in. Yeah. Um, you need a good <laughs> car. Wow. Like, and humble. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. His mom and my mom are best friends, and they've never even met. Right. Like, okay. that's, yeah. Um, but anyway. <laughs> but it's like hour 10 of the race. He pretty badly mangled the front of the Mercedes. Oh, and Yeah, you know. Um, so my guys are like, okay, we need an interview. I'm like, John, yeah. where, are your job. Yeah. where are it's you? Where are you? So yeah. brought him out, you know, did an interview with him. And my last question was something about, you haven't won a race in three years. No. Oh, <laughs> there it is. How badly do you want to win this race? Well, they did go on to win it, so it wound up being right. okay. But it was Damn like, it. Oh. It, it was that moment of John in my ear. I don't even remember what he said, but it was He's like, like, at a girl. It was like, I'm at so a girl. Proud of so that's yeah. like, and if somebody's going to learn from these podcasts, this is again why you date outside of the paddock. Yeah. So, um, worst game. Hmm. I would say Gustavo Jachman because he pretty much just stares at you awkwardly. Three-way high five. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does he just sit there and he's like, <sighs> is, he, is he totally like rep 101, 102? Is he totally? Uh, Does he speak? What no. is he? Is he Portuguese? Uh, Colombian. No, Colombian. Is, there, is he yeah. speaking Spanish? Is that they speak yeah. Spanish? Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, they don't speak Col- Colombese? Well, a lot of people don't no. realize that Brazilians don't speak Spanish. I understand that, yeah. but they actually do speak Spanish. Okay, well, the then Colombian I guess I was version right because Spanish. I said Spanish. Okay, but, I, I, but I, back to trashing Yakima. Well, wait, wait, yeah, let's get into the. Like, so, okay, so, what so, is it? One of the questions we threw at Lally, mm. and it was kind of a joke, but he answered it, so we just kept it going, was if you could punch anybody in the face in the, in the paddock, who would it be? And he was like, oh, Yakima. Mm. Like, no question. So Taylor you, Brothers didn't say the same? 
They named somebody else. They went a different direction. Yep. Really? Yeah. Well, what's interesting in this is when it comes to praise and hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of it's, the same people. It's fairly <laughs> consistent with like, who do you hate? This guy. And it's like the same two or three guys. Who mm-hmm. do you love? This guy. Same two or three yeah. guys. It's yeah. really interesting to us. Hmm. Universal. Well, yeah, so Yakuman's bad game. I got to know. <laughs> Yakuman, what do you do? Well, it, um, it was last year or two years ago. I can't remember. I think Probably it was two last years year. Ago. Was it yeah. last year? No, it was, uh, no, it was two was years ago. Year. Okay. It was two years ago. You were right. Was this um, I was standing there talking with um, K Brew. And okay. we're standing there, and the two of us are just there. And apparently, Yachman walks out from the throughway hey. and walks <laughs> by very hey. slowly. This is the sound. This is how he sounds, by the way. And hey. stops. Hey. And then turns and looks back and does another up hey. and down. And Kelly goes, You realize he just stood there for like 30 seconds hey. checking out your ass? Hey. It's like, Oh, that's nice. Hey. So. Did it work? No. No? no. Didn't hook up? Mm-mm. Weird. Yeah. Not my <laughs> Weird. Type. Yeah. He's he's not my type, unfortunately. Um, best. Who's, who's got good game? Yeah, not saying it? anything had to happen, but who's but got like, good who game? But like, who are you like, okay, like, okay, well played. Yeah. Well played, sir. And it can't just because it's like, you know, Dindo Capello was awesome. Like, it can't be anything like that. Like, who's got, who who's like, okay, that guy's <laughs> damn charming. Mm. Charming? Yeah. Mm. Who's who's the charmer? That's hard. No, it's not. Farnbacher <laughs> used to be... Yeah, Dumb. how did yeah, I know? Yeah. Dumb. That he's a beautiful man. Yeah. Okay, so that was also a common theme. Yep. Yeah, Dominic Farnbacher is <laughs> um, a beautiful man. Yeah, Tommy Kendall gets lost in his eyes too. Yeah, yep. Kuna. well, they were they were teammates. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. shared you know many a things. team and seats. Many and uh, and then Kuno it gets awkward. That's just too much handsomeness. But Kuno. Kuno's married and has a kid. But he's a beautiful man. You gotta he give is. Us that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's a super athlete. You yeah. know that that guy does triathlons for fun. I, he's perfect. I have no doubt. Like he's we insane. get it. He must yeah. be stopped. Yeah, right. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. Well, he rides his bike down here sometimes because he, he has From a, Canada. Yeah, from <laughs> Canada for the, for the weekend. Yeah, he's like, oh, hey, guys. Um, well, Gonna go back. Well, he is actually quite a bit north from where, where we are right now, like maybe 10 miles. So, really? you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I could do that. And, Sean could do that. Oh, yeah. Well, I did I did that <laughs> yesterday. Um, oh, you ever try? Yeah. We're like best friends. We're BFFs. Ooh. He's in the friend zone. Oh, yeah. Friend zone. No, He's totally friend zone. in the friend zone. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Shutting it down now. No, yeah, no, no. Like it's, it. He's in the friend zone. I get it. Pierre Kaffer. Very good much game? a charmer. Oh, I believe yeah. that. That's a good yeah. looking man. And the French That's accent. Seven. Do you have Netflix? Like, I do, yes. What's in your queue? What is my queue? You know, I haven't been on Netflix in such a long time. I don't even remember. Silicon Valley. Um, Make it happen. Is that it? That's not even no, HBO. HBO. Yeah. 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 yeah, I do have HBO too, okay. so Boom. I can do that. Make it happen. Yeah, I've been rewatching Modern Family. That's what that's I've been, an excellent that's show. Perfect TV show. I yeah. love that that's, show. This is as we were talking earlier. Like, it's what people don't realize is for a show to be successful, you look at that. Like, it's it's, it's an easy formula. Everything has to be perfect. Yeah, and that's what that show is. Well, Every yeah. element of that show is perfect. That show lost. For uh, the, the early seasons, Lost. at least. Yeah, so back when I knew uh, I was working with Damon Lindelof, the creator over at uh, Crojo. <gasps> no. Yeah, yeah, he lives in my phone. I can give you his phone. He number. lives in my phone. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Damon, yeah, he's J.J. Abrams' right hand man. Okay, yep. so. Oh, so. no, I, I know. I yeah. used to watch the Lost podcast. Oh, really? Him. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah Damon's no, I was, my boy. I was a serious Lost. I can show you some emails. He's an awesome dude. He's married and very happy, but oh, he, he had some game when he was younger. Um, <laughs> he, he had a lot of game. Mm. Let's just leave it at that. Good to know. Good dude. So, uh, Tommy Kendall's question. Oh, we oh, haven't even gotten to that? We have. Got, okay. But let's yeah. just to recap. Tommy yeah. Kendall's uh, – so, Tommy Kendall's question. I want to know in the paddock who's got best pickup game and who's got the worst, and I want names. And so, it's – worst would be Yakuman. Worst would be – yeah, Yachman would be there for, but not even saying anything. Does that even count? Just like, like just he's staring like, at hey. you frequently. He thinks hey. he's got it. Yeah, and that hey. you're gonna fall on him. Yeah, hey. pretty much. Okay. Um, hey, that one. Yeah, <laughs> hey. honestly, and not not from trying with me, but from what I've heard from other sources <laughs> sure. in general, the okay. whole paddock. There's I would like say four. Um, <laughs> just from, from lack of trying in general. Right. Um, do you ever like buck up at him to see if he'll like flinch? No. You don't just like, you're no. not like the kid in the lunchroom that like knocks the tray out of someone's hand. No. I was you don't the, do that at Marion's. I was so you're the not kid like, who had the lunch up? tray. Yeah. Knocked but out now you can beat up guys in, in, in your, in your well, crew Well, I know there. I could, yeah, but you know, so. just cause you have the power doesn't mean you should use it. That's what the dark side of the force oh. is there for, you know? Now, have you seen Star Wars? They use the power for bad all the oh, time. I know. Yeah, they like they blow up okay. planets. I know, yeah, they did but, okay for themselves. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> they built a whole empire. I'm Luke before, before he goes back. to the dark side. You know? Yeah, but he would use the force. Yeah, yeah the good side. You said the dark side, though. Yeah, but like obviously Luke goes to the dark side because this new movie, he's going to be the 
the evil bad dude. Like that's you don't totally shut gonna happen. Your mouth. You don't know it's this. Totally you're gonna happen. Ruining, don't know that. You're ruining it for many people. Yeah. <laughs> who? Who am I ruining this? Okay. Me, Shay Adam. Me. I am the kid who in seventh grade brought my lightsaber to school because <laughs> I took God lessons from a fencing teacher right. on how to fight with the lightsaber. Okay. Like I that was me. So, okay. you know, I'm a Star Wars nerd. I'm certified. Where's your cat? He doesn't live here. Oh, he lives oh. with my parents. No, oh, because I know you have a cat. Yeah. You gotta have a cat. Yeah. yeah. His name is Patch. So okay. what's his full name? Adams. Say it. Or Bill Bill Adams cat patch. Patch Say Adams. It. Patch Adams. There you go. Yeah, I got it. See, you can't say it without smiling. <laughs> Doesn't it make you feel or like judging. a better person? Well, I can judge. Yeah. Okay, so that's our pass-along question. That's our pass-along question. And since we're already on the topic, tomorrow we'll be having breakfast with Liam Dwyer. Lucky. Wait, he lives down here? Oh, yeah. He lives, he lives in Fort Lauderdale. Is it Fort Lauderdale? Uh, it's kind of so hard to get a, a some, read on him. Cause he lives in some weird adjacent city. Um, we are going to eat breakfast in a city that's right next to here. I have to look it up because it's fine. It is. <laughs> um, oh, it's photos of my dog. Uh, what's in my... Here it is. Hold on. Let me... We are going to the city of Tamarack. Yeah, that's not a city. Yeah, I know where it is. Is though. that a district of Fort Lauderdale? Tamarack. It's a general area. It's up uh, near Speed Source, actually, I think. Oh, okay. Is that near here? I don't know. Yeah, not yeah. far. Remember Sunrise? Okay. I was saying that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Speed so that's, that's near here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. We've got out. Hampton in waiting for us in Tamarack, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. You guys could have stayed here. On the air mattress. Dibs. One of you had the air mattress. One of you had my bed. I'm going to go stay with my mom. Whoa. Oh. That's really sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back there anyway. <laughs> so, Just. okay. So, uh, pass along question. Liam Dwyer races uh, Mazdas in the Continental Tire Series in the ST class. And uh, has been blown up twice mm-hmm. and has an awesome sense of humor about his entire everything he does. Love the guy to pieces, literally. Anything you can think to ask him. What made him want to stay in racing once he had experienced his first loss? Because that's always hard for people. When they come what into you mean racing. First loss? Well, when they come into racing and they think, you know, they go through the the driving school and they think I'm the best ever, you know, I went to driving school and then they come into a real racing environment and realize how tough it is. And they don't win. Okay. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people um, who go through series where they dominate. Right. And then they get into a series where there's actual competition and it just shatters them. Yeah. So what, what was that driver that made, made you keep going? Okay. Does Shay have any haters? Do I? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. You but like, you don't, know? you don't get like tweet hates, forum oh, hates. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I like how she yeah, said that like course. with a smile. Like, of course. <laughs> yeah. No, when, when What's people. What's the funniest <laughs> thing somebody said to you? <laughs> um, you don't bad. belong in a pit lane. Yeah, um, of course. In a fire suit. All women should have to wear oh. the flag. Oh, they elsewhere. went the girl route. Oh, so, oh, yeah. so it was yeah. somebody oh, that was completely a moron. Well, yeah. Most of the criticism I get isn't from people questioning my knowledge. It's questioning whether I should be there because I'm a woman. And Really? You know, in yeah. 2015? Oh, yeah. There are people still living in the Stone Age. Um, but that's when I say, that's fine. You know, swap me out if you can find somebody else who knows what I know can, or works so as hard as I we're do. We're working on a new theme. May I suggest a reply next time? Yeah. Now, you'll have to hijack what I'm going to do, which is kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just reply, kill yourself. I think we start a thing. That'll become Shay universally Adam accepted. Just... And then somebody <laughs> like, does, because one person gets sued. Nah, whatever. Mm. Um, Sean does. Because he just said it's his idea. <laughs> it's my idea. Yeah, we right. have right. okay. Perfect. Okay. That's fine. Off right. the hook. I don't give a shit. If you are yeah, that... You can't right. take nothing. You if know? you are that stupid to think that that has to be said, then I'm almost fine with Sean's advice. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just slowing down the evolution. Yeah, what are you doing? You're just ruining well, everything. You're the, you're the problem. Speaking of, speaking of uh, wearing fire suits and pit lane reporting, I have a very serious question. Mm. Um, so Daytona this year, why were you wearing a Brickyard 400 suit? I still have that in my closet, but actually. What, what, huh? Um, I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better. It's from 1995. Yeah, I remember seeing the um, logo. I was like, that's a weird thing. Yeah, it's my, one of my mom's fire suits okay. that she got from doing a story, obviously, in 95, um, where she was supposed to have a ride in the pace car or something like that. Okay. And um, she got to keep the fire suit. It's I don't even know if it's FIA legal in all honesty, <laughs> but it was the only fire suit I had in the U.S. 
So whenever I needed to go into the hot pits, I would wear it. And yeah. I wore it back in 2011 to, you know, look like I belonged. Sure. Um, but I do have a beautiful, and this is a word that I'm going to say the British way, which confuses a lot of people and makes my mom really angry. Adidas, which is uh, apparently how you're supposed to oh, say it. Oh, is it really? Yeah. yeah. I've been yelled at both sides. Okay. Um, I have a beautiful one of those suits that fits me perfectly oh, and wow. is not too baggy or too tall. Or and, whatever. Um, it's actually a magical fire suit because it fits Heidi as well. So How is that possible? <laughs> it's magic. It's it's magic fire suit. Uh, how have we come this far without any damn cookies, by the way? Oh, do you want me to grab I them? would love some yeah. cookies. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to put this out there that these uh, cookies these are awesome. Are, um, you made these yourself? Yeah. yeah. I like made them, scratch, I made them the what, three hours before you guys yeah, got yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Were these from a log, mm. or did you, like, you did the dough and the whole thing? No, no. They're from a log. They're from a um, packet, a, but I put in secret stuff. Oh them. wait, are Not these drugs. are these pop brownies? <laughs> 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 oh, all right, this got no. good. I mean, I <laughs> bath salts. I started yeah. <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> Damn, you figured me out. <laughs> I started baking stuff when I was younger because I just wanted to lick the batter when I was little. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> and, sure. and so I would make a thing of cookies and then not eat any of the cookies because I would just sit there and you know like scoop the stuff right. in my mouth. It was really bad. Okay. Um, so then it developed to a point where I'm like, I can't just keep making cookies and people expect people to eat them. I have to make them good. So I started experimenting with like different ingredients, different spices I could throw in and stuff like that. And I finally figured out the perfect like extract to throw in and this and this and this. So after years of perfecting it, I've made the perfect cookies. So even though they're <laughs> technically from, you know, the the bag that you buy at any grocery store, they're not because they're they're slightly changed and perfected rapid fire okay best smelling driver Ooh, i'm really bad at this rapid fire yeah this is um, uh, just fire now okay the farm <laughs> use some product in their hair to make it stand up really Absolutely. high um and it smells really good yeah okay well it's my next question god's is god's pixie dust right my next question was best hair farm brothers worst smelling oh god uh scott tucker really hmm his breath. Ooh. Does it smell of crime? <laughs> no, blood and roses. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> she didn't there hesitate there. That was immediately. I love this woman. If you were Asian. Worst language on air when you're interviewing. Ooh. Um, I don't think I've really. I've, I know I've had one person who's dropped a swear word, but I can't think about who it is. It's me, probably. <laughs> no, I, I think it was Jenna Losey. Oh, but yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah. I'm surprised it was only one. But I, I really can't. People tend to behave around me. Right. Really? Yeah. It's pretty nice. Do people, because you have, you, you come off as very kind of squeaky clean, and mm. it seems like you actually are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does that, uh, <laughs> do you think that encourages people to be so much worse around you? Um, when they get to know me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because people understand that I have a very good sense of humor, right. and sarcasm is my first language. Yeah. So once people realize that, they get so comfortable that they drop everything, and they reach levels themselves that they didn't know they had. Okay. So yeah. Most awkward driver for interviews. Um, I'm trying to think. There was somebody in Barcelona, I can't even remember his name, Barcelona. who gave yes or no answers yes. to questions that were not yes or no. Oh, I love yes. this guy. I'm already in. Yeah. Was it Kimi oh, Reckoning? No, even better. Even better. <laughs> there was a guy. There was a guy who was from Slovenia or Slovakia, one of the Slovak countries, who pretended he couldn't speak English when his car had a massive crash, <clears throat> but then happily talked to me in complete sentences when his car had won the class at the end of the race. Oh. That guy. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. But you don't remember who it was? I can't remember his okay. name, no. Wow. Okay. He nope. was a middle aged guy. But it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inspirations inside the sport. Um, in terms of journalism or driving? Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Drivers, obviously, I've said McNish and Dario. Yeah. Um, in terms of journalism, Heindy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. looking at, good at gold. <laughs> He's kind of the, you're working kind of under the gold standards. So yeah. 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 Um, it's, I look up to him, um, Varsha, obviously. Yeah. Um, oh. when he <laughs> and Matchett and Hobbs used to do the F1, I can yeah. remember waking up early and watching those races with my dad all the time. Right. Yeah. So listening to them, um, and Peter Windsor, when he used to yeah, do those sure. as well, Absolutely. he was really good. Do you know, uh, Bob Varsha was on our podcast yeah. and, uh, Sean called him an ass. 
I did, in fact, call him an asshole. To his face. Yes. Yeah. To his face. Yeah. And, and the only good. way you could probably do it. Yeah. But yeah. I was, I was, and Varsha appreciated it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and the funny thing is, if you listen to it in our uh, our podcast, it, it's one of those things that kind of sneaks in there. And then like, when we were listening to it. To, I'd to, forgotten I did it. Right. Yeah. We were listening so. back to it just to check over everything. And he said it. We both looked at each other and just started <laughs> crying, <laughs> laughing. Because it's like, I call did Bubba say like, that. <laughs> I listened to him as a child. <laughs> I have to throw in Brian Till, even though it's going to inflate I love his Brian ego. Till. Yeah. Brian Till so. is like, it's going to inflate his, his hair. Yes. All yeah, right. that's well, what's yeah. going to happen. Let's, so let's flip this around. Who is the best at completely useless advice? <clears throat> you know, just sort of takes you aside. You know what you should do? Here's what I, I would be. If I was you, I would be, you know, and it's just, just and you're like, spouts off useless information. Oh, lady, beat it. <laughs> Justin Bell's pretty good at that. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Again, the consistency from episode to episode. I hate, oh. to, say, I hate to say it. Oh, but. oh, yeah. God bless you. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty good at that. Mm. And there, there were a few people in our ALMS um, TV compound who were very good at doing that, but they weren't people who had any like they were yeah. runners effectively right. there were people PAs. who were there for the weekend yeah. who were running who were like if you want to be a pit reporter you need to do this this and this and i'm like great i'm doing graphics this weekend <laughs> right yeah. yeah maybe one day yeah, yeah. man jb getting the call out. i like it yeah i like this is this very open-ended question and and you're going to want more specifics i'm not going to give them to you who gets it in this sport well porsche obviously everywhere wec they were one two in the first sessions that were going on. I don't know where they are right now, but I would venture a guess that with an hour and 16 minutes gone in the first practice oh, or whatever it is. At, uh, yeah, they're at yeah, Shanghai. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would guess that they're pretty high up the charts. Uh, they dominated in Tudor this year in the GTD pro- uh, GTLM. Um, not so much in GTD, um, but, you know, they have their focuses elsewhere. I would, again, say that's not their fault. Because no. I would actually, being very Porsche loyal, I would agree. So Porsche gets it. I would argue that they don't get it on the livery design. Mm, you look at their throwbacks, though. Yeah, the throwbacks are awesome. What yeah. are the throwbacks? Like the golf livery car. Is that a thing yet? Uh, they've been doing it in, in Europe. They just haven't done it. On here. what? They did it in, um, there's actually a golf team, team, oh, God, I can't remember their name. But not the factory. It guys. runs ELMS now. Okay, I'm, I'm talking factory. I'm yeah. talking factory yeah, cars. Porsche intelligent I get what they're doing. Sucks. Screw that. Yes. Your cars look like crap. You can't tell what they say. You can't tell what they say. They yeah. just look like mm, we made it white with some lines. It's funny to me that when Porsche this year at Le Mans had their three 919s and they did a white, a red, and a black one. And when we saw a red and a black of the exact same paint scheme, it was like, oh my God. And you're like, no, you're just begging for a beautiful car to have an awesome paint scheme. And so a little bit of color makes it seem that way. That was the best car to win, in my opinion, because you have Hulkenberg, who's a stud, but he's not a sports car guy, yeah. so he's outside coming in. And then you got Nick Tandy, who's not Who like, is a stud. He's a stud, but he's not like the uh, typical factory driver. Like, he gets <sighs> into it with people, he's got opinions, and he loves NASCAR. Yeah, he loves NASCAR. He <laughs> you know? He's and then, a, yeah, he's and, a stock car driver, and he gives some of the best answers. Yeah, he's cool. I love yeah. that guy. And then you got Earl Bamber, who was, uh, the, like you said, nobody knows his name, but yeah. the dude's a complete missile. Oh, yeah. You know, but they're like the new kids. Yeah. That's like the B car or the C car out of A, B, and C all being awesome, well, but it's the C car. Porsche didn't think they would do anything. Yeah. The instructions they got was go out and run your race. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, do this, we're running you strategy, you run this. No, it was go and, go and see if you can win. And they set like the fastest lap yeah. in history, the Nick, fastest stint Nick or Tandy something. Nick Tandy had the fastest stint with yeah. 319 as an average, yeah. which is mental. Right. Um. But yeah, I mean, Earl's actually a really funny story because when he raced Bathurst two years ago, one in class with the, another guy, Ben Barker, he, he's always very flirty as well. I have to give Ben credit. Ben Barker? Yeah. yeah. You have to give okay. him credit. Um, in a good, like, it's you have game. Yeah. Is it because good, he has, yeah. It's because he has an um, accent, right? No, he's like seven feet tall. Oh, is that, oh. Is that what you're looking he's for? He's like way, yeah, he's way. That works, huh? Um, All right. But they were driving together Just, and... Pat Long was in the race for the first time. And Earl was out on track with Pat at the same time fighting for the lead. Right. And he passed Pat Long mm-hmm. on pace. Okay. Like they had the same tires. They mm-hmm. had the same everything. And <laughs> Earl gets out of the car and pulls his helmet off. And I thought he'd like done something wrong because he was just grinning from ear to ear. I'm like, the heck? Like that was under his helmet the whole time. Mm-hmm. And he, I go over and I'm like, can I, can I chat with you for a minute? He goes, yeah. I just passed Patrick Long. Yeah. It's like, wow, fangirl moment. I like you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's getting late. One of the last things I wanted to know is because you interview so many people in the paddock, 
and you know a lot of the personalities and everything. Season one for us was like, let's go get named people that are known because not only is it going to be good interviews, but you guys are going to help us promote this because you're going to promote yourselves. So that's why it makes sense to have you. It makes sense to have Tommy Kendall, people that have a following. Next year, my personal goal is to get the drivers and mechanics and engineers that aren't as well known because mm-hmm. we know they're going to have the stories. So give me two people off the top of your head that you're like, you got to talk to this person or this person. Can I say Marion? Yeah. 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 I, no, think I, I think Marion and Sandra as a joint yeah, thing for sure. is worth your time. Do you think they would give us the scoop? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because Marion has so many stories and so many people just don't listen to her. Yeah. And it's really a shame. That's definitely happening. That, I actually um, like 100%. fully agree with that. For those yeah. listening, if you're not familiar, Marion and her daughter Sandra run one of the longest standing catering companies in the in the sports car racing world yeah. and they go all over the place doing it and, and you'll in fact, in, in several of our podcasts you'll hear people refer to going to marion's yeah that's sort of just a general expression to say you're going to go eat yeah exactly and right. it's good food it's, it's good not food. track food it's yeah food. exactly there's a reason it exists <laughs> yeah <laughs> so okay we got, we got um marion's and then one more person anybody you can think of in terms of story value um for a driver i would say nick tandy I want Nick Tandy anyway because oh, I love the guy. Yeah, or yeah. Earl, Earl Bamber. Yeah, we're gonna get Tandy. Well, for so my personal, we're man gonna crush. get our UK side of the trip. My, my man yeah. crush will be Tandy. Um, yeah, I think he's a lot of people. Like he's kind of a man crush for me. I think he's a handsome man. Yeah. Back off. Sean. Oh, he is. So he's mine. We'll, we'll compete. Back we'll see off. Which one do you want to hang? Should out you with be me? going after like you know Takuma Sato? <laughs> <laughs> he likes Asians. I love Asians. Um, Nick Tandy. I don't remember what it was, but like. It, like when all the ranking stuff was going on, he sent me like a direct message on Twitter and he's like, what's going on? And I kind of gave him a quick, and he's like, that that bullshit. I'm like, I don't even know this guy. Mm -hmm. And and he's just always been really cool with me. So I've always kind of cheered for him. He got into it with somebody. I think it was Oberlin. Well, that's weird. Oh, he's had a big, yeah. yeah, And I used to be a devout Oberlin fan. I still do respect him. He's, he's a guy that I've always looked up to for my career. But the way they both handled the situation, I was like, yeah, I like Tandy on this one. And the way Tandy handled it, it was not like whiny. It was just like, eh, going for it. And and Oberlin kind of went into this like just whiny mode. And I was like, no, dude, like I looked up to you. Like, just go punch him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just go punch him. We'll be like, yeah, Oberlin gets it. You yeah. know? Um, but I just love the way Tandy handled the whole thing. So he was definitely on my list. We just have to figure out a way to get to England. Well, if he's already on your list, Dial. Yeah. He's always a fun guy to talk to. And he's got a heck of a story that not a lot of people know. His family owns a chocolate factory, right? His family owns a bakery in a, bakery. In a small town in Scotland that my dad's from. Oh, no. That worries. like six people live in. There is a Scottish theme with you. It's yeah. interesting. All yeah. right. It's family history. Okay. <laughs> Last thing I want to point out for my side of the podcast is that I'm sitting in front of two minions. Yep. 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 That are, I think those are like to scale. <laughs> they, <laughs> like that's actual size right? it's, yeah, but it's they, the same they guy pretty much are it's, um, uh, well no actually one of them's Dave and one of them's Stuart if you ask they, my nephews are they really um, they are they both look like Stuarts yeah no they're they're Dave and Stuart um, mm-hmm. the one without the tag is, is Stuart and the one with the tag is Dave they are for when my nephews who live uh, not too far away from here come to spend the night and they wanted something to be able to hug yeah, <laughs> not the not the eleven year old. He was fine sleeping He's without. Like, I you don't know, need a minion. Yeah, I don't need a minion. But but the five year old, um, when they come over to spend the night, they want something to hug while they sleep, and they yeah. don't want the minions yeah. to live at their house because they're worried about them coming to life in the middle of the night. I would too. So they want them to attack me. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. That one is actually kind of eyeballing me. <laughs> He's he had his eye on you all yeah, night, Ryan. I don't like that. Yeah. All right. But I get, there's only one, and this is a. a semi-normal question that I'm sure you've gotten before, but uh, you're a little biased because you grew up in a racing family, Mm -hmm. but you're 24? 25. 25. Yep. Thank Uh, you for that. (laughs) When you hit your 30s, you just don't care anymore. (laughs) Um, So you're 25. Um, and if there's a big, not just not just sports car, which is kind of your thing, but but motorsports in general, there's a huge criticism that we're not doing anything to bring in young folks. Um, I, I don't want some giant, vague, oh, here's this and that and the other thing we should do. If there's just one little thing that we could start doing now that's attainable, what can we do to get the, the 25-year-olds back? Um, well, I, I was going to go even younger. Uh, you tie the little kids to chairs and tape open their eyes and turn on racing and make them pay attention. That's what I was doing all day earlier today. 
Um, you start with torture. The basic. No, no. Um, <laughs> the basics. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's all about making it more attainable. So, for example, with uh, Twitter, with my my Twitter account, the whole thing has been I have a hard card, but I've never seen like I started out knowing why do I have this when normal people don't? And why does this get me where everybody else can't go? So I feel like I should show people what I'm seeing and experiencing. So that's why I got onto Twitter and started using that. Um, to try and make that more of a thing that more people to can take do. you through the experience. Of yeah, what you're not yeah. Because in all honesty, there are too many people in the pit lane right now that don't need to be there, which is a big problem in Europe. Less so here. Uh, Le Mans is dangerous, quite frankly. Because um, they, just everybody's got a hard card. There are so many people with, with the privilege of going down there who don't need to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and those cars come in hot. You know, the refueling. There's a lot of potential for stuff to go wrong. Um, but on the other side of that, I feel like people should be given more access not during the race but before the race and like doing autograph sessions is great but there should be more driver availability there should be more of a chance to actually talk to your heroes okay. so if i was running things i would do it like the lms did with the grid walk and all that and that imsa has carried forward to keep doing uh in the weather tech championship but i just feel like people should not feel entitled and like yeah no big deal you know <laughs> Just won Le Mans, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. Um, anything else we need to know about you? Anything else you want the world to, to just know? All our dozen. Well, okay, if you take out our parents, our ten <laughs> listeners. Um, I am a massive Harry Potter nerd. Okay. That's probably so you like the nerd things that are cool. Get. You like Star Wars. Yeah, let's you like point video out that games. She's wearing a Simpsons t-shirt. You're wearing a Simpsons I did that just for you. Oh, that's awesome. I did that just for that's you, awesome. Ryan. You know, Jordan Taylor actually has a Homer Simpson uh, radioactive man or whatever sitting inside a Ganassi IndyCar tub in his kitchen, like f like to scale size. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's Jordan too bad. I might have to marry him now. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you there's, and Jordan will work? Yeah, there's worse guys to marry in the world. You and Jordan Taylor, we're setting up a little love connection here. Does on, it start uh, here? Yeah, he lives in Florida. I'm up for that. All right. So it, we're, we're, we're in a weird era where nerds are acceptable to only certain nerd things. So if a guy likes Star Wars, he's in. Mm? If he likes Harry Potter, he's in. Mm? Game of Thrones. I haven't seen Game of Thrones yet, but I've been told I should. Okay. But if he likes Game of Thrones, you're okay. Yeah, I've, I have no reason to dislike it. You what if he's yeah. a fan of Civil War history? I'm a massive fan of Civil War history. I My degrees are oh. in creative writing and history. Okay. So I studied uh, Civil War and World War II was my specificity. Okay. But that was for its impact on Florida. So, yeah, I am that kind of weirdo. Love connection with Sean and Ryan. <laughs> That's our this season. This just got so awkward. We have many spinoffs. Okay, that we've so come up if, with. let's let's run a couple spinoffs by Shay. If yeah, there's going to be a love connection between you two, you're not staying here. That's I'm a gross saying. idea. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's like our show. But you're right. Okay. We should change the title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how do you feel about? And you don't have to be on it, but as a concept, sleepover with racers, slumber party with racers. I like sleepover better. Okay. No one says slumber anymore. Yeah. Like, would you watch like? Bill Riley in pajamas in a sleeping bag talking to us like this. Absolutely. See? In a heartbeat. It's a, but it has to be video, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, but it's quadrupling. But yeah, it, it can't be audio for that. No, no that would just be. be creepy. Yeah. And you need lights, too. You need the budget for lights because yep. if you did that, like, you know, black and, yep, and lights. green, that, no, would, that would be creepy. No, it's got to be Prevo. If you had to decide between cooking from Jeff Brown, Bill Riley, or Jordan Taylor, who do you think would be the winner? Jordan. I think she really likes Jordan. Yeah. I'm he he poor knows poor Ricky. Tony. Ricky has a big green egg. Yes. And Ricky has Emily. I thought so. Jordan inherited that green egg. Or is that Ricky's? There's two. Oh, there's two green yeah, eggs. Yeah, they both okay. have yeah. yeah, we ate from the green egg just oh, yesterday. Wow. That was yesterday. That's right? This has been this the whole is, thing. Yeah. Like all the this, time was, like, this was like six, this time yesterday we were sitting across from them. Yeah. Six, Aren't you jealous? Oh, so six, jealous. Six oh, weeks man, ago when we sat down with the Taylor brothers, <laughs> or an hour ago, I can't remember. I will say that I think it's funny. We didn't really mention, we didn't really come to this conclusion yet, but uh, Bill Riley and Jeff Brown both cooked or like served the exact same meal. Identical meal. Well, it's, it's like steak, a vegetable, and apple pie with vanilla ice cream. Mm. Like Brilliant minds. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I think we should go ahead and announce the winner on that. And I'm going to go with it's a, it's a category win. So I'm going to say that Bill won the, the entree, but Diane and Jeff won dessert. 
I like it. Yeah. I like you it. You know, they both are going to get their trophy. They'll get their <laughs> – You know, it's we Pro-Am should, We should present this. It's Pro-Am sports car I think it's the Roar. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> getting something. If, 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 knock on wood, if we see Ryan Eversley at the Roar, I think we've got to present all three with their own little participants' Ooh, trophies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Shay, we really appreciate – you giving us the time. You're going to be back with Radio Le Mans next year. Forever. Forever. Yeah, yeah. As long as they'll keep you. Yeah. Yeah. As are long you, as I keep getting are, plane tickets. Are you going to take over? Is that I your think goal? That's the plan. Is it like kick oh. Clint out of the out of the collective and then move into yeah, the? How do you how do you move up? Do you have to cut off the head of the other guy with a sword? <laughs> it's it's a sworn secret. Because I would watch that. I, with Clint. I can't um I can't divulge the sworn secrets, but I am the responsible adult in training. Oh, and Eve keeps okay. saying she's going to leave me the boys, to which I keep saying no, please don't. <laughs> please, <laughs> no, please no, don't. I'm good. I yeah. mean, Eve makes that show happen. I have to assume. Yes. Yeah. She's yeah. yeah. She's behind the scenes. John it does right. a lot of the technicals, but Eve does, is okay. the brains behind she the operation together sure. yep. yeah she she really does a lot more than anyone gives her credit for and How? this is a woman who used to be the director of the royal albert hall oh wow oh shit, really? yeah oh okay i didn't know that she left that to, to head up radio Le Mans. <laughs> yeah poor thing more power to her she loves hindy how <laughs> drunk is hindy all the time oh completely wasted <laughs> i've never seen him sober <laughs> I just picture him like when he, because he stands for so long. Mm -hmm. And I just picture him like, even though I know he's not doing it, like with like a scotch, you know, and he's just like, (laughs) like oh, we got another fry off the gravel trap. You hear like the ice clinging around. He's like, oh, that wasn't good. Sports cars, Ron Burgundy. Yeah, that's that's how I picture in my head. He's always got like a cocktail and he's just like in a robe, you know, they're just watching the race. Like that, I, that's our video. Yeah. Yeah. That's our interview with him. Yeah, he's just got a drink in hand the whole time. Like, they were like, oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> he's in a robe, <laughs> underwear, and a drink. Sitting there with stogies. Thank yeah. God that's not true. Well, it is in I, my heart. I have recorded uh, Midweek Motorsport in my nice fuzzy pajamas before, though, because it's cold in England, even yeah. in June. Yeah, I believe so it. So I put on fuzzy PJs. So you can have that mental image if that's any better for you. Is it a onesie? No, I wish. The footies? My mom won't let me buy one. <laughs> so as a Star Wars fan... This is the last thing I'm going to say to you. Mm. Target has oh, these. Know. Okay. So you've seen the onesie <laughs> yes. zip ups. Yeah. I have the Stormtrooper and Chewbacca. I don't have Darth Vader yet because it's kind of cheesy. Do you have the R2-D2? I didn't see an R2-D2. They've got an R2-D2 at our Target well, right now. I guess here. we have yeah. a big day tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. 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 But you realize fire suits are giant onesies. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I so. mean, that's why. In fact, this year, Acura's it didn't have pockets. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> I put my hands. So like anytime you're standing around, you're just like. Okay, I Good stand radio. like this now. Awkwardly yeah. hugging yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think Continental's got the check. Meow, 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 meow. I'm finished. The lovely Shay Adam, super funny, and I got to say, for for being a sort of squeaky clean as she is she can roll with the humor and that's a that's a big plus so all right we're gonna send this one out with another song by uh citizen cope who have been nice enough to let us uh kind of promote some of their songs all of this is available on itunes here's a song called southern nights enjoy Southern skies Have 
Have you ever noticed southern skies? Its precious beauty lies just beyond the eye It goes running through your soul Like the stories told of old Oh man He and his dog that walked at old hand Every flower touches his cold hand as he slowly walked by Weeping willows They would cry For joy Joy Mystery Like this so many others In the tree Southern night. 